Um, I'm Sean from Hit Parader uh, fan page, of course, on Facebook. And I'm here with Jeff Tate, formerly Queensryche, and now uh, your own band, Operation Mind Crime. So I heard a little bit of the, the sound check, and I'm kind of astounded because you sound as, as clear live as you do, as they say, on tape. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Well, my sound man is an uh, incredible um, sound man, Kelly Gray, who's a record producer oh, and Kelly, yeah. guitar player, played mm-hmm. with me in uh, Queensryche and all through the years. And we've been playing off and on, making music since uh, the 70s together. You know, so wow. he knows his way around a mixing console. Yeah, you know, sure. yeah. Um, so now I, I I don't know exactly how much you can or want to talk about from the the breakup, I guess, and then move on. You know, I'm not sure that's that's your call. Of course, that was always the big news uh, when it all happened. Have you gone back and are you still friends with any of these guys? Do you do you have a chance to talk with any of them or have you kind of said, you know what, that part's over. We're moving forward. I'm doing this now. Is that is that where you're at or do you still contact some of these guys? Well, to, just to refresh, um, we had a massive falling out in yeah. 2012, which led uh, me to leave the band and for them to sue me and take me to court. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of money that exchanged hands and a lot of bad things were said in the press. And we never had spoken since May of 2012. We hadn't spoken a word. Really? Uh, Just recently, two weeks ago, um, I got asked to appear with uh, a European band called Avantasia. And we did a couple shows in um, Switzerland and one in Barcelona and where they were headlining a music festival there. Oh. Uh, when I get there, the music festival, um, I see that Queensryche is opening the dates. So I got, you know, I got to go see them. I haven't seen them play without me ever. And I hadn't even heard anything uh, since I left the band. And I'd never heard their new singer. So I went out to the show. And I ended up talking with everybody and uh, we, you know, all had pleasantries to say to each other and uh, watched I watched the show and uh, God that guy he's a great singer he's fantastic yeah. he sounds just like me <laughs> <laughs> and, well that's if you think of bands like like Journey and things like that that they've got to find somebody who's going to carry that sound and you know what I mean you have a very distinct voice I mean this it, you have a very powerful voice and I mean that comes from you were were you trained operatically when you were younger like before the the band days oh yeah that's that's what i'd read so being the fact that you have that unique voice it's it's really hard to find somebody who's going to be able to maybe not compete but but kind of fill in those shoes you know mm-hmm. and i have read a recent interview uh, with those guys and he kind of said the same thing he's like you know what uh there's been the rumors where you know someday jeff might come back or something like that and the guy says i'm okay with it whatever the band wants to do because this this was this was Jeff's band when it came to everything uh, that you toured with the music you sang people recognize you and the band and the sound he's like if I'm a fill in for now I'm okay with that if I'm permanent I'm okay with that too you know well, so the first time I'd ever spoken with him uh, was in Barcelona and we had a nice conversation and did a selfie together and <laughs> <laughs> I guess that means something well I uh, guess so yeah does, I, that mean, I would, does that mean we're dating or what does it mean I don't I think selfie is okay you know if there's if there's kissing involved that might be a little bit it's a little weird yeah. Uh, yeah that would be really strange so, <laughs> yeah. so um, I, I wanted to bring this along as well I, I found this uh, in the archives um, this is a 1990 issue end of 1990 issue of course uh, you with Chris and um, this is just this is just prior to Empire coming out. I mean, this is like, and it says in the <laughs> is in the pages here, uh, striving to for to, for greatness or something like aiming. that. And aiming, that's it. And of course, by then you'd already had one, two, th- well, an EP and three albums. Rage for Order and Operation. We had four albums. Yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. And so, so it was kind of funny that they put it that way. Um, I want to go back to. to I think this might be when they discovered us. <laughs> it, it, it might very well have been. I. I know uh, as a fan of Circus Magazine, they caught you early on. Do you remember seeing any of those, uh, those magazines at that time with you guys? Because there were, there were a lot of live shots. Yeah, Circus, Hit Parader, the Cream Magazine, those were kind of the, the big rock magazines at the time. Right. Yeah. This, this magazine, Hit Parader, was, we had an interesting uh, relationship with them over the years. Andy Sesher became uh, a pretty close confidant, mm-hmm. and um, I always respected his fashion sense. He was he was a cowboy in New York City, 
you know, yeah. um, always. always. It wasn't it wasn't like a, a costume he put on. He was a real live cowboy in New York City. Even though he was like from the East Coast, I think New Jersey or something like that, he was a cowboy. Do you know Every day of the week. Do you know mm-hmm. what he's doing now? No. He's actually a uh, anthropologist. Is that right? He really, really is. When I called him to say, hey, I don't know if you have anything to do with this anymore. Can I, can I run this as a Facebook page? He says... There's nothing. I don't know who owns the name anymore, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, go ahead. Do what you want with it. And he's like, I'm an anthropologist now. And I was like, okay, you go from hit parader to an anthropologist. At first, it didn't make sense. But if you think about it, anthropology is, is basically the studying of, of, of history human and history. human history. Yeah. You're, you're, uh, Queensryche, all the different bands, uh, culture, that's all part of human history. So I, can, I think it kind of fits. It does fit. I didn't see that coming, but uh, <laughs> so, I'm happy for him. Now you know. Um, okay, so this this new this new album and and the new band Operation Mind Crime. Where'd you get the name? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Okay. Uh, well, so with with the new band, I mean, you've had a lot of uh, different guys coming uh, coming in and out, um, and and I suppose depending on where you're touring, you've had, you have other guys coming in and out. Um, when it comes to this this situation you're in now, where you've gone from. You gone from playing, you know, clubs to theaters to arenas, and then you're sitting now at the point where you're you're almost starting over a whole new career. But you do have a backlog. I mean, you have a you have a name, and you've got some talent behind you. People know who you are. Do you like going back and playing playing the clubs again, and maybe the theaters as opposed well, to things? I gotta I gotta straighten this. This is a misconception that many people have because of magazines like this, for example. Um, Queensryche spent the majority of its career as an opening act. Mm-hmm. We only started headlining um, sporadically on the Empire Tour in 1990. Um, and then in um, Promised Land, a little bit on Here in the Now. And after that, we went and started playing clubs. We never were an arena band, yeah. really. We opened up for a lot of arena bands. Sure. Our music was always more, it, it wasn't, well, I'll tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't mass consumption music. Mm-hmm. It was always the, quite left to center, yeah. you know. And we, we had a, a fluke of an album, the Empire album, which radio seemed to really gravitate toward at the mm-hmm. time, and they played the heck out of it, and we had a, a top commercial record. Mm-hmm. But before and after that, we were never were a commercial act, you know. So we didn't actually play the clubs until after we played the arenas right. because we went from recording our EP to being an opening act on every arena band there was, right. you know, so we didn't actually play our own shows until much later in our career. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's interesting because again, now you're used to this kind of thing, as you're saying, because the misconception was, uh, like you said, you had silent, silent lucidity, of course, being the biggest single, um, all over MTV and the radio and classic hit stations all over. They still play this song. Rock stations still play it. Um, Empire. I've always thought Empire was kind of your pinnacle. I think when it came to a lot of the, the, the growth and the growing, although, I mean, I fell in, I fell in love artistically? with. Artistically? Are you kidding? No, not artistically. I, paint by numbers record. <laughs> not artistically. <laughs> artistically, I mean. Rage for Order, order I love. sales-wise. Yeah, it right. had a $6 million promotional budget. None of our records ever had that again. No, <laughs> not even Operation. And- Mindcrime was a, was a huge disappointment until uh, a year and a half into the release of the record when we had the, op- the amazing opportunity to make a video and put it on MTV, oh. which they invited us to do. And uh, we put it on MTV. In two weeks, it sold a gold record. But before that, we were at the same sales we'd always done. So mm-hmm. if, if you're talking sales and commercial exposure, mm-hmm. Empire was absolutely our peak. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just went like this, straight up, and then nothing right. after that. Well, that was the thing, and it, it, that's kind of what I was getting at, is the fact that commercially, that was that was the biggest, that was the peak of the band. Um, but as a progressive rock band, as you said, you were... You were a little left to center. You weren't. No, we were way left to center. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, this was this was thinking person's, you know, yeah, a, a metal. Way left to center. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was digging it, and, and a lot of my friends were digging it, and the people who who really gravitated to that, um, that was that was our stuff. We loved the the thinking man's uh, metal, that kind of stuff. You're smart. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, when it comes to uh, like here in the now was the follow up after that. Uh, that was the ninety four. 
Maybe five, I think. Uh, yeah, the follow-up to Empire? No, yeah. Was no, that was Promised Land. Promised Land. Here and the Now is the one after that. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, Promised Land actually had some rock radio uh, hits on it because at the time I was pl- I was playing it at a station in the Quad Cities here in Iowa, 97X. I wouldn't say hits. That's very loosely. <laughs> yeah. That's very nice of you to say. But <laughs> Well, that word is used for anything that people people liked. Hit, got it on the radio. Again, it's FM rock. Oh, yeah. So that, that charted on FM rock charts, but it wasn't, a, as you say, wasn't a top forty hit. No, when, when, you, when, you think, when I think of hits, I mean I'm thinking sales. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean it sold a million copies. Yeah, and I, I can't really say, oh my god, that's a failure. Right. You know. Right. And then all the music actually after that um, kind of had that same vein. You were very, you were going really, really uh, far into the progressive stuff, and a lot of the songs became a lot more intricate even as you went on into these, like the here and the now. We also uh, lost our record company because of that. No. no, we actually released Here in the Now, and two weeks into our tour, uh, the record company went out of business. Yeah, so we had a, a massive world tour plan that we had to pull the plug on, and we only ended up touring 10, 10 weeks on wow. that record. Wow. Well, that's unfortunate, because that was also one of the ones that I, I really loved, because, again, you were getting even more thought-provoking in, and not just... Not, not on that album. That n- album was actually written um, as a blueprint to Empire. Oh, really? Okay. What I meant was that the, the music itself was really getting to the point where it was it was extremely intricate. I was noticing the difference as you were going along. Like, Empire was such a big commercial hit. Um, I wouldn't say, it, not cookie-cutter songs, but it was, it was almost made for radio play, almost, because it worked so well that way. But everything after that became much more intricate when it came to... Uh, uh, the musicianship of it it really really got deep and that's what i thought what i what i loved about it as you went along did you finally start thinking that maybe i wanted to do more of what empire ended up being at any time um well we we did that with our, our last studio album um dedicated to chaos was really absolutely written with empire in mind mm-hmm. Um, everybody in the band wrote on the album. Um, we spent a lot of time together making that record. And unfortunately, um, the record company went out of business again <laughs> right when we released the album. We have had the worst luck with record companies. <laughs> you need to pick better record company. <laughs> We've had two record companies that went out of business on the release of our record. We've had one record company that uh, gave us a whole bunch of money to make a record and then went out of business before the record even came out. Um, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Well, I, I, I want to really thank you very much for, for having some time to talk to me, too. And uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. I know you got to get going. The band uh, is actually here in Waterloo, Iowa. They're going to be playing. I'm looking forward to it. I know a lot of people that I've been talking to, too. There's people coming from out of town for sure because I've told them you guys are playing. So they're coming to see the show as well. Um, and I just want to let everybody else know that the, if, you, if you get a chance to see Operation Mind Crime, when they get out into your area, you really got to really catch it. Sound check alone just amazed me. So um, it's been a real... We won't be doing a lot of shows this year. We're, we're only doing this two-week run. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'm doing some shows uh, with Avantasia again. I'm going to Brazil and playing some shows with a whole group of different people there. And then uh, we have a tour that starts in Europe, I think in December. Okay. Yeah, so we won't be making it back to the States again until next year. Until next year. Um, is that? Are you looking at like maybe touring a new album? Is there something recording going on right now? It's coming out. It's uh, I, I just did a, a trilogy of records. Um, well, I've released two uh, under Operation Minecrime. The first one was called The Key. The second one was called Resurrection. And the new one is called... <laughs> and it comes out in about a month. How do you and spell? Blah, blah, blah. It, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, again, we're, I'm looking forward to to seeing what's coming next. I, mean, I always have. I think you're one one of the greatest songwriters, specifically because, again, you're a smart guy too. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you play it off really well. <laughs> Um, again, this is Jeff Tate. Operation Mind Crime is his uh, new band that he's taken out and some new releases. And, of course, sounds like some new music coming out pretty soon, too. So thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate it.